Hey everybody and welcome back. Well as you can see we are right where we left off yesterday in fact. I've just popped out today. Linda's got a Zoom conference call so I thought I'd come out and see if I can get this bit finally fixed. So um, definitely get this done this week. Finally you're saying. Finally. But uh, I hope the boring the, the videos haven't been boring, but I think really in these videos you've seen what it entails. The guys out there who uh, do this for a living or whatever or are watching just to see how much of a mess I make of it, you know what you're doing. But for the rest of us who are maybe thinking of trying this, you can see the problems, you can see the difference in sort of trying to shape one complete piece at the end and here building it up in bits and pieces and what have you. But this job's very much been like the first frame I modified for trials bike. I honestly had that frame sat on the floor and I kept looking at it and looking at it and I was thinking, dare I actually take a hacksaw to that and start cutting chunks off. And after I'd done it the first time, then after that I thought, you know, you know, they don't fall apart. You just got to take your time and think things through. And it's exactly the same with this. I've thought of making one of these any number of times, but always I was just put off. I thought, no, I'll never do it. So you've seen all the trials and tribulations. And as I say, I'm, I'm not particularly happy with the shape I ended up with, but that's design rather than manufacture. So sort of looking over my shoulder each week, you're seeing how it gets done and uh, hopefully what not to do and what to do and uh, let's carry on we'll get this bit put in we'll do our other welding we'll uh, I'm going to spray it with the red again and then see exactly where the low spots are we'll try and planish it all out and then once I'm happy that it's ready to be polished that there are no big dents or flat spots or anything then we'll weld it to the base because as I say it'll be a lot easier to hold then for holding it on the polisher. Oh we've still got the um we'll put the top in the filler cap in we'll put that in somewhere like that to give us plenty of splash room underneath and of course to fill the tank up we'll want to be able to fill it up so that's the plan so uh, let's get on with it. Right, well, we're getting really close with this. That's about right for that. So what I've done is I've scored it here. So we're going to cut that piece off. It goes down there like that. I'm going to finish this a bit more at the bottom. You can't see the bottom, can you? There you can see. See there's a gap here. I'm going to get that to sit in nicely and then I can score the line better at the bottom. So then I'll cut that out with the tin snips. Now I've cut this bit out with the tin snips and I've cut it, you can still see the line, I've cut it on the inside of the line so that I can sneak up on this. I'm slowly sort of sanding little bits off. So it's about in all the way around to there. But then I've still got a little bit of shaping to do. And then when it drops in we should have a nice curve like that. So that needs bumping a little bit, bringing it in just there. Let me do that just right on that piece. Because what you find is, as I'm learning, that as you start to curve things, the line you had changes. So that's why I'm doing it this tiny little bit at a time. See, I've still got to come in a bit there but the thing is when I make that come in this is going to change the sort of length of that 
and it won't fit right so we're really close to our line we're going to sand that a little bit so it will drop in and this still needs to yeah that needs to come in right now and that goes in there now it's basically it all around once that's in there I can finish that off with the dolly so I've got to take a smidgen more off here to get it to go in I don't know whether to take it off this so you just take that bit off let me sand that bit off right I've done some more tapping to get the shape better but actually a lot of it was just sanding to get the edges to come right because once I get them right I can actually do some more shaping once it's welded up with a dolly behind it I think the curves are all gonna follow so what I've got to do is tack it where we're touching perfectly and the couple of places that aren't so I'll tack it up there I'll tack it here and then just here I've got to work it a little bit and then I can tack it down there and then we'll take it off and weld it and there's the last piece welded in and uh, yeah when that wind welds ground off that I think looking at this from the front oh, it's maybe slightly slimmer on this side than oh, that's warm on that side when that's all pulled up and welded up so let me get that ground out so that I can make sure we we've got the curves right and then I'll do a little bit more beating with the slapper to make sure everything is is good as I say there's no big dips or anything like that there's still actually I've made a better job of that than that there's a this side there's a little dimple down it needs to be beaten out so anyway let me do that and then we'll come back and see about putting a hole in the top so there it is sort of sanded out initially uh, what I've got to do is actually on both sides just work on this edge here you can see that I think you can see from the angle that there's a slight gap here this side actually it's it's holding it out and here I've got a little gap so that's actually got to go in a bit right so when that's finally shaped so what I'm going to do is a job that I shouldn't really need to have to do as I say I'm going to weld the, all these seams on the inside if my penetration had been perfect and I'd had a little crest here then that would have been job done but to be on the safe side as I say I'm going to weld it on the inside and then I'll be sure it's a good joint so when I've done that I'm then going to make sure I can get it all shaped correctly I've made myself a new dolly this dolly sort of just had a handle on the bottom of it so I've made that so that I can get into these places here and down at the end and then when I've got it shaped nicely I'll take a well I'll show you what I'm going to do there when I do it all right right well there's the first seam done inside as you can see it looks very nice not only that let me turn this over see if I can keep you in focus Again, it's light shining on it if I was really careful about the lighting but anyway I've got virtually perfect penetration the entire length of the thing so this can just be sanded out now that's the way it should have been all right let me press on and do all the others you can see it at the top look all yeah, right just thought I'd mention in case any of you were wondering I actually did this in about four pieces 
moving backwards and forwards and blowing air on it in between to keep it warm. So it hasn't distorted this at all. The lines are fine. That will planish out and that will sand and planish out beautifully. Right, well, I've done all the seams. No distortion, which is very nice. But look at this. This, don't forget, this is the back of the seam. It's perfect. Why couldn't I do that when I did the outside? Anyway, let me sand these down and get planishing, which I won't show you because that's the boring bit. Now it's not fully dressed down on the welds, but I give it go over with the die chem. Let's see what it looks like. Still there, as I mentioned. That's not too bad. Let me uh, <coughs> finish sanding it. Right, so there you can see it's not bad at all to start with. Now, don't forget there, I just rubbed it to get the, uh, the red off. So I haven't actually done any sanding into it. I think what I'll do is get the fine disc on a three inch sander and see if I can take these welds down at least so I can get a straight run at it. So let me do that. Right, well, I think we're 99% there. Um, got a couple of minor things that show up and of course they'll show up worse when this is polished but uh, this will look so much better when it's got the curve in it but there it is swing around a bit so as I mentioned as you work on this it moves so let me show you. You can see how these have moved a bit. As I've sort of beaten the top it tends to spring it out so that's got to be pulled back in and then these have got to come back. These have opened out that way as well. So they've got to be tapped back, fitted at the bottom and then we can put the filler cap on. So where shall we put the filler cap? Now I had one comment that was running along the same lines as my own thought about putting it to the side so that filling it might be a bit easier. But there's quite a big gap here to the tunnel and of course you know we're not taking this to the petrol station putting a pump thing in we're just going to pour it in. So I don't know. No, I think I like it in the center. About there. Oh, tell you what, we should check anyway. Let's go and put this on the bike. No, it's got to be miles away from the forks, hasn't it? It's because the the headstock is like this. Yeah, no, that's not going to be a problem. But we better go and look just in case. So, I think it looks best up there. I mean, it would be, it would go up right. Now, nah, that looks weird. I mean, if I put it on, nah, it's going to go there. And as you can see, we've got plenty of space. And the forks don't hit the tank either, so we've got that fit right. So, yes, I think about there. I'll make a mark and we'll go cut a hole.
Right well, here we go. Inch and a half hole. Right. Knew that was going to happen. Oh, it's still there. I just moved it so that it's uh, up against something. These things are a bit grippy even when you've got them in a the vice or whatever, in the mill. You know what I'm going to do? Put a glove on. Just in case this pulls. bit of work you've actually seen isn't it? Everything else I've done off camera. Believe me I did plenty. Well actually I was expecting that to be really nasty when it went through. All right let me clean this up. Right, there it is fitted. I'm just wondering which way. Yeah, the collar must, collar must go that way because it presses up against the O ring. Because I was wondering whether the collar went underneath to be welded on. Squish the ore in now. Mm. I'm going to weld it on the inside. I don't know, let me think about this. Well, just when I thought we were out in the woods, somebody put a tree in front of me. Won't screw in now. It was awkward to weld, I should have welded it on the outside, but it was awkward to weld. I probably put too much heat into it distorted the collar it won't screw in any further than that oh, god damn it well it's gone five o'clock that's enough for the day right well it's the next morning I've calmed down and uh, this, when I measured it, 
this was made in the US so there'll be imperial measurements this is one and a quarter 12 which when I looked in the chart is uh, UNF for one and a quarter inch so I've ordered a tap because it does start going a bit so it obviously just needs you know here's the thing we've talked in the past about cost of tools my master car where I normally get my stuff and I have to put an order in had a tap $148 or if I wanted a sort of titanium coated one you know the yellow ones it was $160 odd dollars so I thought it's only alloy and I probably never use it again so I went online and I got one for $24 so even if I only use it once it's worth it all right but the big thing is I'm stopped for another reason um the welding rods I've got I'm using 4043 alloy rod for this which was recommended for welding 3003 and I haven't got any of that left in 330 seconds the only I've what I've got is 53 56 actually I don't even know how I've got two different kinds but I must have picked it up and not noticed so I'm gonna leave this going down the to town tomorrow I'll get some welding rods tomorrow so we will get definitely get it done for the end of the week in the meantime we'll go and do a couple of other little jobs right well we're going to do a couple of little jobs with the exhaust I've actually found that right here there's a tiny little hole it's where I've caught it when I was shaping this so I've got to fill that in with a bit of alloy weld and also I think I'm going to put that extra piece of exhaust in here um, with some holes in it just to take a little more of the crack off so what I'm going to do is mark that there so I know where that comes to and then all in all we'll come back to about there now that goes in at an angle so <clears throat> I might only be able to get to about there four inches from there so there's going to be an inch or so here and then an extra three inches of pipe so let me take it off first of all and uh, we'll see what's what right I've done a little bit of alloy welding oh by the way if you uh, if you hear a chainsaw in the background it's across the way at George's we had a windstorm last night and it blew a tree down knocked a load of his fence and the power lines down so that's the power company out there right it struck me rather than try and measure this and maybe get it wrong what I've done is this is the piece of tube we're going to use as the extension put that in as far as it'll go pulled it back and marked it then that mark on there and this mark on here are the same Have I marked this the wrong way around? Yes I have, haven't I? I was going to do it wrong again, look. So, let's see. The long mark is to the edge of there. That mark is to the edge of there. So, mark that there and that's where we're going to cut it to weld on it there glad you were watching there look I put the mark on the wrong side again at least I would have been measuring it too long not too short so if I cut that off there for a little arrow on so I know which is the right mark right so let me cut that off then what we're going to do is we're going to weld a little piece in the end with a big hole in it to let some of it out there and then we'll put this in the mill and drill a load of holes in it and weld it on there 
So I've cut this to length and the disc, if you use hole saws, never throw the disc away. Because like here, I've been cutting a hole for the same size tube, so now I've got a nice disc. We'll make the hole bigger, but uh, for the time being, we we'll just tack this on and then I'll weld it. Mind your eyes. And again. Right. Let me weld this round, then we'll put it in the lathe and drill that hole out. So I've got the piece welded in. I drilled a fair size hole. I don't want to put too much of a restriction here. I just it's going to be well in, so there's going to be some back pressure and it'll come through there. So basically all I'm going to do now is put it in there and go along and drill some rows of holes in. I'm going to drill three eighths holes. I think they'll just nicely do what's needed. Right well. I've put holes in, I think they should be fine because as I say I haven't restricted it that much but that little restriction will just help. So next we'll put it in this little jig here. I couldn't find any angle iron, strangely enough. So I uh, just use this piece of channel. Thank you Jensen, it was something he bought actually for his project. And this will keep the two pieces of tube completely in line. And then even if the ends aren't square, you won't end up welding it wonky. Okay, so I'm going to weld this round here. Let me get on and do that. Right, well, I'll put the sander back on. There's that piece welded on there. So hopefully, maybe should put the sander on. Yeah, let me put the sander on first. I know it'll fit. Actually, I just needed to loosen it to give myself a little bit more. Uh, Clears there. Uh, put this other one on. Still clear of everywhere. That's on tight. Uh, a screwdriver for that. Let me get a better clamp for this than just a Jubilee clip. Tighten these up. These are all 716th. There we go. So that's a little job done. I was thinking of doing that. Right, I need to make a new trunnion for the rear brake. So let's do that. Right, well, there's the little temporary trunnion I was using which piece of tube so what I need you see is to be able to have a hole the cable is 76 thou 
that I need a hole that this can recess into. Well I couldn't in a piece of tube so we're going to make it out of a piece of solid round. This actually is 9 16 so I want it to be half inch so we'll have to turn it down slightly. Then we'll drill a hole through merely as a guide really more than anything else. We'll drill a hole right through the center then we've got to slot it to that hole and then we've got to sort of counterbore that hole for this to fit in because this is a quarter inch. So as you can imagine since that's only half inch there's no way I could do that in a piece of half inch shoe. So let's put this in the lathe and get started. I turned a piece of this down to the half inch I need, the right length, but I left the rod because I've been able to put it in a 9 16th collet in the collet block so it just holds it nicely. So I've got to start and drill in, spot and drill. That will drill there. Then I've got a 7, 76 thou drill which I'm going to drill a hole through. Then we've got a quarter inch end mill. So we'll plunge in to make the, the counter bore for that nipple to fit into. Then when we've done all that, I can actually grip this in the vise, the other vise, turn it over and I can do my slot into there. And then we'll just cut it off and face it and it's done. So that's the plan. Let's see if it'll actually work. In we'll go. See if we can actually drill it. Oh, I'm not even sure if now I think about it whether this chuck will go down to that smaller drill. Right, now we drill this hole without snapping the drill. Speed it up a bit, shall we? second. I just wanted to check this. It's a piece of the same kind of cable. Now 76 isn't quite big enough. Let me find a bigger drill bit. 
Right, I've run a slightly bigger drill through. I think it was 81,000 or something like that. So there we go. I know I'm going to cut a slot in it, but I wanted a round back. So the next thing is to run a quarter inch end mill in. Right, the nipple's quarter of an inch long. So I'm going to go down, I've already zeroed that. So we're going to go down about 200 disappearing down there we go a little bit further down I think on something anyway that's perfect and as I say I've left it in the collar block because that gives me a nice uh, reference I know that's going to be when I cut that it's going to be spot on so hacksaw blades only 20 odd thou I need it to be or did I say 76 so a little bit more I can double up the hacksaw blades but what I'm going to do is is mark the center and then saw each side of the centre and get it off. Right, so there's one little job done. Put that in there. Hang on, make sure I go right way around. It goes in there. And that goes in there. And there we go. All right, now we have another job and that's the brake pedal itself. Oh, well, that's sticking. Yeah. I'll have to look into that. Anyway, we have to paint that the reason I haven't put the actual pedal on here is because I don't know where the kickstart's going to swing. Now I'm buying for this one of Terry Weedy's, looks just like the one on the modern bikes. It's got the, the swivel knuckle here and it's a nice alloy um, pedal, not pedal, kickstart lever. But he's having to change, I was speaking to him the other day, he's had to change the foundry where he gets them made. Apparently the people he was using turned around and said, you know, really, you don't buy enough of us, of us to do the forging, because apparently this part is forged. So he found someone else and they were making the dies, but he's not ready to get any made yet, or they aren't ready to make them. So when the kickstart comes, I'll know where it swings here. I can make my pedal. All right, so let's go and do something else. Right, now there are actually a couple of things I can do on the tank without the, the filler rod. So, first of all, if you're wondering how this fitted on with having these things and what have you, I did a little cut, little cut outs there and 
couple of holes for the petal tap bosses to fit through so that's why it goes on there so um, you see that there is that in yeah I put that little thing on so that when I had the top on it didn't slide past because I've had that happen you were uh, you're working away getting something fitted at one end of something not necessarily petal tank and then you suddenly realized it's moved and everything you've done this end doesn't work so what I want to do is we're going to put the top on and uh, I'm going to make sure I'm fitting everywhere then we'll take it off the form so I can clamp it to the edges and we'll mark on the top half this curve and cut it perfectly to shape but before I do that I want to make sure that everything else is right so let me fiddle on see that goes on there against that so let me fiddle on and make sure everything is touching nicely and then uh, say so we'll, we'll clamp it at the edges and I can mark it out so I've got a couple of clamps on I made sure it's all in the right place and now I've been able to mark where I need to cut it so do that and then we'll be able to see what it really looks like I couldn't resist putting it on <laughs> now I've cut the, as I say get rid of that big clunky look there looks better from the side actually than it does from the top but uh, we're going to spend a few minutes at the end of this video and I'll sort of <laughs> tell you what lessons I learned from doing this but as I say it from the side seat it down it's nice still need to pull these in a little bit but other than that things are pretty good the reason I want the big rods is for this end and this end the rest of it I'll actually probably just weld up with 16th because they'll be close edges but there's a couple of little gaps around there and around there that I don't want to try and fill with 16th because I'll be too long on the spot instead of being able to put it, in fact I might even get some eighth rather than three thirty seconds we'll see what they've got when I go down tomorrow all right so there's something else to look at now while that's on there so we still have to come up with something to fasten the back down now as I say the way that we've made the front rubber mountains it's sort of pushed on and pushed down a little bit so all we have to do is stop this from moving now on the fiberglass tanks that were on the commandos here like the one I've got on the Nautica they had sort of two buttons and then they had like a great big o-ring you hooked it on one button ran it under the frame stretched it hooked it on the other button so we're going to do something similar but I don't want to put buttons on this. A, it'll stick out. And B, I don't know how strong it'll be. So what I'm thinking of, this saddle actually comes off without this. You could put the seat, the tank on first, and then the saddle. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little lip around there that needs that form changing a little bit to move that over a little lip which will have a curl on it so it's going to take a bit of uh, pounding round be welded on and then we'll have some form of catch under here or maybe like a little hook buckle a bit like a bra uh, so we'll stretch the rubber over that lip and hook it together underneath save making any fittings on here I think that's the easiest way to make it and then that'll hold that down tightly and we'll be all set so the best way to sort of hammer form that is going to be with a little wooden form I think let me go and experiment and then I'll bring you back when I've worked out how we can do it 
Well, it just struck me, I don't have to make a form, a hammer form, do I? Because I've got a load of hammer forms which are that shape. That's, that's the shape of the inside of there. So, I'm going to form it over that. And in fact, because these double up, I can put my sheet in and I can clamp another piece on top. This is going to be easier than I thought. Is that going to be the right way? I need to, it needs to go up that way. Or I can do it underneath. Yeah, let's have a go. Right then, more experimental work. So, there's my piece of annealed alloy. It's going to go in there like that. We don't want this flexing at all. I didn't want to drill holes through things to fasten them up. Right, can you actually... No, you can't hold on a second. Thing is here, you being able to see, and me not smacking you with the camera, with the hammer on the backswing. Right, I'm going to try and use this because it's got the curve. Do it. needs to be longer doesn't it that's got to go under and weld up tight see I, I will cut this around there I wonder if I can pound that out a little bit and make it better let me cut this and see what we can do Right, actually, I think that'll be all right. See, that we'll weld that on last because I want to be able to get at this. We'll weld it on underneath and it'll just stick out enough. Hang on, let me put the top on. Yep, I think that's going to work fine. Go in there. Just make sure it doesn't come back too far that the seat will still go on. Once that's on there, nice thick rubbery band, it'll all be fine, splendid. All right, the UPS man has just been, and he brought me that. Now that's what you call a tap, because this end is enormous, so I had to fit it into a socket, 
Let it run down fine. There we go, look. So I'm a happy camper. Right, what I'm going to do now is give this a rub over with a coarse scotch bright because it will show me, with a bit of shine, it will show me any little bumps and things that I might have missed, creases. I'll slap them out and then we'll see about getting, making sure everything fits ready to work for welding. Right, well, I think I've got this top skin about as good as I can get it. It feels fine everywhere. Some minor things, but... So it's, it's on here to mount it so that it's good and firm. I screwed the filler cap in, put the earth on that, because that's the only way I could get a grip fit. So what I'm going to do is weld it here a little bit and weld it at the back end a little bit. And then that way that will hold the skin onto the tunnel. Then I can take it off here and start clamping the edges and work my way around. So let's at least do this little bit. I've got my new 40-43 rods. Let's see what we can do here. Mind your eyes. Hold that end. should hold that. Get on there. There she is. There we go. Starting to be something like, eh? So we still got this front to pull in a little bit, but other than that, all I'm going to do now is just slowly, I'll stitch weld it, put a clamp on, weld it, clamp, well, two clamps, weld it in between, move one clamp, weld, weld, and carry on like that. And then we'll have a tank. All right, let me get on with that and then I'll bring you back. So here it is, all welded up. Most of it went well, a couple of bits didn't, but, uh, and we've got our piece on there for the rubber to go in. So now I'm gonna polish it up a bit, just for fun. Well, it's been a long time coming uh, where are we? 36 episodes. So, are you ready for this? There you go. Came up quite well. It's maybe a little bigger than I envisaged it, but... Uh, oh, for those of you who 
I'm sure I noticed that the filler cap didn't have a hole in it, a vent hole in it. You're right, it didn't. So I drilled it and I put one of these two-way things on. Now when you normally buy these, they're on a little bit of tube and the idea is that they go on a sort of uh, stub on here and they stick up, look awful. But when I looked at it, the part that goes inside is, I know you're a long way off, it actually has a couple of, uh, for the, almost like a bar for the tube to go on. And I thought, I bet I could fit a couple of O-rings on there. So that's what I did, drilled the hole, a nice tight fit for an O-ring. And that's on there. So, put some fuel lines on. I did have one problem. I had, I think, three little leaks at a couple of corners. And I had one here, which was leaking just here. And I tried and tried, and tried I was messing around trying to fix it in the end. I sawed off that little lip that I've made and sure enough I found a hole sort of just in under the lip where I couldn't get at it so I fixed that so I guess we could uh, put some petal in it and seeing as I did that mod to the exhaust we'll have a listen see what it sounds like oh and when I was water testing this I measured the water and it is bigger than I need it to be. It holds over one and three quarter gallons. And as you can see this filler cap is quite big enough. I'm hoping these fuel lines don't leak on the taps because they're, they're really, I had to warm them up to get them onto the carb. But on the taps, they were a tightish push fit, but I'm hoping they're... Uh, they're not going to leak, so let's see. Well, there's fuel going down that one. Oh, I know where it's leaking from. I didn't tighten it up after I set the double thing on the bottom of the carb so all right then tighten that up so we're not leaking i think i might have seen a couple of drips of water go through this hose hopefully not i actually washed it out with acetone to pick up the water and then blew dry it blew it dry all right let's see what happens here missing a little but it might just be the sound that the Siamese pipes produce but uh, I think putting those extra pieces in there just took a little bit more of the crack off it okay let me go uh, ow just flashed me knee okay so I still need to do the uh, brake pedal but you know all about that so there's a couple of little jobs to do that uh, I'll get done like the alloy barrels I'll get done over the next few weeks because we've got snow it's below freezing all the time and then we'll do one last video in the spring show it with everything on and I'll take it out into the sections okay so just before I go I wanted to mention a couple of things about the tank tank took a long time and I know some people uh, mentioned that you know they were thinking of doing it and one or two said put them off don't forget this is the first one of these I've ever made I mean it took me four attempts just to make that I was really learning as I went along but what I did learn was you've really got to visualize it a bit better than I did as I say I, I feel it should be 
slimmer at the top and it certainly would still hold about a gallon and a half. But other things like the fact that I didn't think out this curve and that curve. So that made that really hard. If I made this one again, I could probably make it in half the time. But if I, even if I made this one again, I would make it, I would make all the curves easier. So in other words, this curve to the back, I'd probably start here and go right back. And the same with this, I'd maybe have a line here. That would curve to the front and that would curve all at the back. But I was trying to do this easy piece here and I think that made it harder. Uh, what else? So really, you have to take more control of your design. You have to make sure the book and the form are absolutely spot on because I think particularly the book wasn't quite right. Uh, so it didn't come out perfectly symmetrical, both sides. But on the whole, 3003 is the type to use. Uh, 4043 for the welding rods because as you can see the welds have disappeared that matched up perfectly um, other than that honestly if you're thinking about it have a go um, I certainly will make some more but uh, for now that's it right now next week I'm doing a video for a little job I wasn't going to do but a lot of you said I should, so I am doing. You'll find out next week. After that is Christmas, so and the Christmas falls on the weekend, I think. So we probably won't have a video, because I'll be here and there visiting people. Safely, of course. And uh, then it'll be New Year's weekend, and we will unveil our new project. Alright? So, until next week, stay safe, and enjoy yourselves.